Hey, Shalom, Most High in Christ bless you. Got Captain Ben Zion here, and I got with me. Officer Messiah. All right, we're going to do another 15 minutes with the captains, man. We're going to name this one, Should I Denounce My Fraternity or My Sorority? All right? So should I denounce my fraternity or sorority? All right? So we want to open up with, um, let's open up with Proverbs 3 and 31 right quick. Because um, when you come into this truth, you got a lot of people that was part of these, uh, what we call uh, sororities and frats. All right? Uh, Called the BGLO, that's Black Greek Letter Organizations. For people who may not know what I'm talking about, you have your uh, Omega Psi Phi, you have your Alpha Phi Alphas, you have your Alpha Kappa Alphas, you have your Zeta Phi Betas, and things like that. Should you denounce this in this truth? Should you should you denounce that for the truth? Okay, um, and the answer is absolutely yes. All right, uh, a lot of people do these things out of ignorance when they was in, in into college and stuff like that. And they was learning the way of the heathen out of ignorance, okay? So, let's read this right quick. The book of Proverbs, chapter 3 and verse 31. Come on. Envy thou not the oppressor. The scripture said don't envy the oppressors, okay? Um, you are, you went and you joined a black Greek letter organization. The Greek letters meaning that it come from Greece, all right? It coming from the Roman Greco era. When you, you know, that's why you have Roman numerals and Roman, those letters, those Greek letters and stuff like that, okay, involved in the, your, your um, what you call it? The fraternities. Within the, the fraternities and the sororities, all right? That's why you have Alpha Phi Alpha and, and stuff like that. Those are Greek letters, okay? So the scripture says do what? Envy thou not the oppressor. All right, don't envy the oppressor. And what? And choose none of his ways. All right, so don't choose none of the ways of the oppressors. Okay, the oppressors are the first ones who what? Who started to do these Greek letter organizations, all right? It comes from Greek. And you got to ask yourself as a black man or a black, uh, black woman, how do you go into college as an African-American leaving high school and you come out, you know, a Greek? All right. It doesn't make any sense. Should you denounce it? The answer is yes. OK, so don't choose the way of the heathens. OK, because these Greek letter organizations out of ignorance, you didn't know that you was joining. They had founders and most of these founders were in opposition of who? Marcus Garvey in opposition of Black Wall Street. OK, you can look it up. You can Google it. OK, they were they were in opposition of the black man being entrepreneurs and having their own. But rather, they believe that through higher education, you're going to be successful, okay? And that's how the, a lot of Greek letter organizations got started because the white man, okay, Esau, he started to give those people who started these things certain perks in life, all right, certain perks in society to show that, no, we got to stop following Marcus Garvey and his... Um, his, his liberation movement and start to follow us in our higher education uh, movement. It was a lot of people in opposition to Marcus Garvey doing his thing, but a lot of black people, they say they love Black Wall Street and they know how it got destroyed and stuff, but not knowing that you have joined organizations that help take them down. All right, the NAACP, what's his name? Uh, W.E.B. Du Bois, he was in opposition. Uh, you had uh, people like Langston Hughes. They was in opposition of us having our own. And this is why that these people who started these uh, Greek letter, these fraternities and sororities, if you re research history, you'll understand that they were in opposition of black people uh, having any kind of financial liberation. All right. And they was teaching that if we want to be successful, we need to funnel through their educational system. All right. In order to be successful. All right. So let's go. First Maccabees 4 and 15. Should I leave or denounce my fraternity or sorority? The answer is yes. All right. According to the Bible, you have to denounce those things. Okay. You have to denounce being an, a Q dog or an alpha or a sigma or um, uh, a theta or a zeta or whatever, a gamma, sigma, rho, or what? You have to denounce those things. You can't walk with God, all right? And a lot of people, they, they don't want to denounce these things because of this scripture right here. Come on. The book of 2 Maccabees, chapter 4 and verse 15. All right, come on. Not setting by the honors of their fathers. Not setting by the honors of their fathers. Come on. But liking the glory of the Grecians best of all. See, that's what's wrong with black folks. We like the glory of the Grecians, the a.k.a. 
Esau, a.k.a. the white man, more than we like the glory of our own people. Okay. All right. So read that one more time. Second Maccabees chapter four and verse 15, uh -huh. not setting by the honors of their fathers, but liking the glory of the Grecians best of all. All right. So that's what you have to learn to renew your mind. All right. That's what Romans 12 and 2 said, that you can't be conformed to this world, but you got to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You got to love, okay, and like the glory of your own people more than, more than the other nations, okay? Go from there. Give me Psalms 106 and verse 5, all right? 35, excuse me. Psalms 106 and verse 35, all right? It's hard to go over this in 15 minutes, but just for time's sake, we're going to hit a few points on this. Should you denounce your fraternity or sorority the answer is yes come on the book of psalm chapter 106 and verse 35 come on but were mingled among the heathen the heathen are the other nations all right every time that we are taken into captivity we are mingled among the heathen meaning that uh when you're mingled among them you're going to want to be like them you're going to want to assimilate uh into their culture into their society come on and learned their works. And you're going to learn their ways. You're going to learn the things that they do. All right? You're going to try to, okay, if such and such is being um, successful doing this, let me do it. That's the way our minds has always thought. All right? And that's the way we think today. All right? Is that it? That's it on that. All right? So let's go to uh, Matthew chapter 6 and verse 24. All right? Let's get into the gospel and let's see if you can serve two masters, all right? If you can serve two gods. A lot of these people, they join these college fraternities and sororities not understanding that what? You are serving another god. For example, the A Alpha Kappa Alphas, which are the sisters, right? The AKA, they wear the pink and the uh, green. The pink and the green, right? The pretty sisters, they they call them, right? They, if you look on their shield, they have the god, Greek god Atlas, all right? You have a man that's holding the world on his shoulder. All right, that's a Greek god. They worship those gods in the time of the Bible, all right? And the, during the time of Paul, when he was walking the earth, teaching them to separate and come uh, and, and lead these dumb idols, these are the gods that they was worshiping. You have the um, Delta Sigma Thetas. They worship the god of Minerva. That's why they got the woman, um, they, they got the god on their shield, all right? You have... Um, they worship Egyptian gods, too. You have the Alpha Phi Alpha. They worship the Sphinx. All right? They worship the Sphinx. You'll see them with the, um, they even make the hand signs and stuff like that. All right? They worship the Egyptian god of the Sphinx. You have, um, give me some more. You know any more? Uh, the one with the cat. Uh, oh, the yeah. You got Zeta Phi Zeta. Yeah. They worship the, the cat. They do to the make the sign like that and for the signal of the, uh, the cat, which is an Egyptian god, Basset. All right, Basket, Basset, or something like that. I can't remember the exact name, uh, <clears throat> but that's an Egyptian god. What's another one? Q's. All right, the Q dolls. They do an Egyptian god as well. They that's the uh, I think it's Anubis. Oh, um, I think that's how you pronounce it. It's Anubis. <clears throat> All right. The come book on. of Matthew, chapter six and verse twenty-four. Okay, come on. No man can serve two masters. Understand that that no man can do what. Serve two masters. No man can serve two masters. Come on. For either he will hate the one. Either you're going to hate the one. And love the other. And love the other. All right? That's in the Bible. You can't serve two. Matter of fact, give me Exodus chapter 20. All right? The first commandment. <coughs> the first commandment. Exodus chapter 20 and verse I think it's verse three, ain't it? Verse three. Yeah. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. All right, so you got to understand that. Read that again. The book of Exodus, chapter 20 and verse three. Uh -huh. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. All right, so you can't have any other gods before the God of this Bible. All right, Matthew 6 and 24 again. Matthew 6 and 24 again. So our people don't, they do it out of ignorance. They don't understand that they went and they crossed over to serve another God, all right, out of ignorance. But when you come into this truth, you understand that you can't serve two masters. You can't serve two gods. You got to denounce one. Either you're going to denounce the God of this Bible and get eternal damnation, or you're going to uh, denounce that, all right? Or you're going to denounce your fraternity or sorority. You're going to have to do it and lose friends. That's the only thing you can lose with that, friends. 
brotherhood, sisterhood. You get another brother and sisterhood when you come into this truth. All right? When you come into this truth, you 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 get another brother and sisterhood. I guarantee you. And we do community service. All right? Too. So a lot of them like to say, well, we do community service. That's right. what I do. That's what we do community service too. Matter of fact, bring what you you got from them and implement it in, for God. Okay? Come on. The book of Matthew, chapter 6, and verse 24. No man can serve two masters. You hear that? No man can serve two masters. You can't serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and serve Minerva. You can't serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and serve the God of horse. All right? Um, you can't serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, all right, and serve the God of Anubis or Niobus, however you pronounce it. You can't do that. All right, you go either you either gonna love that or hate this, or you gonna hate this or love that. That's what Christ is saying. Come on. For either he will hate the one uh -huh. and love the other, right? Or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. So you gonna hold on to one or despise the other? All right. When you come into this truth, I hope you have a, a bright idea on which one you need to despise and which one you need to love. You need to love the one, the God of this Bible, who brought you into this truth. And a lot of people, uh, sisters and brothers that come into this truth, they still holding on to those brother and that sisterhood but through their jobs and through the ones that are still in college, all right, for the young brothers and sisters that's still going uh, and, you know, that's entering into college or fixing to go into college or um, that's in college now. You're still holding on to that brother and sister uh, sisterhood that you are uh, serving with other gods. Come on. You cannot serve God and mammon. You hear that? You can't serve God and mammon. That's impossible. You can't serve God and the devil. It's impossible. Give me uh, Revelations chapter 3 and 15 right quick. Revelations 3 and 15. Should you denounce your fraternity or sorority? The answer is yes. Come on. The book of Revelation chapter 3 and verse 15. Uh -huh. I know thy works, uh -huh. that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would work. I would thou work cold or hot. You hear that? So he said, "Look, I know if you cold or hot. I know if you in this truth, but you still, you know, what your friends talking about? I, I think you're a cute dog. Still staying ski wee to your friends at work or to your college colleagues. All right, God knows. Come on. So then, because thou art lukewarm, he said, but then because you are in the middle, come on." Neither cold nor hot. And neither you are cold nor hot. Come on. I will spew thee out of my mouth. God saying he's going to kill you. All right. If you sit up here thinking you're going to be uh, in the truth, wearing fringes, and be a, a cute dog on the side, or be an alpha on the side, or be you're going to come in here with your pretty dress, head wrap on, and still talking about uh, uh, ski week and a uh, hoot and all that stuff. Uh, still want to go to the Greek shows and all that type stuff. You want to still step and be in line. All right. All right, so the Most High God said he'll kill you if you're going to sit up there and try to do both. So you got to make a decision. Either you want eternal salvation or eternal damnation. That's it. It ain't no middle. All right? If you try to play the middle, God said he's going to spew you out. All right, go from there. Give me 2 Corinthians 6 and 14. 2 Corinthians 6 and 14. Should you denounce your fraternity or sorority? That's like asking a man, should he denounce his gang? When you come to this truth, should I denounce being a blood or a crip? Right. Should I denounce a Christian church? Can you do both? Can you do both? Come on. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 14. All right. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Do you hear that? Don't be unequally. What did I say again? Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. All right. Don't be unequally yoked with unbelievers. They don't believe. You have to leave them behind. You are looking and seeking for what? Total salvation, eternal salvation. They don't know. The best thing you can do is come into this truth, all right, and be an example. Be an example to them, all right, and hopefully that you can win some of them over as well. That's being a true brother and sister, uh, all right, and, and, uh, to someone, all right. It's trying to show them how to get what? Eternal life, all right. Come on. For what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness. All right, if you're keeping the commandments, all right, righteousness, all right, means that you are keeping the commandments. What fellowship do you have with them? Am I saying for you to denounce them as being your friends? No. I'm saying denounce the the um the idolatry part of it, okay? 
tell them that you're not a part of that anymore. Do you speak to them? Yeah. Can you give them scriptures? Yeah. Can you send them videos? Yeah. All right. But far as you talking about they want to go to a step show, they want to go out to eat, and they still want to do this sisterhood thing, uh, do community service and stuff like that, you tell them, no, you're not being a part of that. And if you know they're doing that in honor of that fraternity or sorority, because you have a lot of preachers, all right, and you got a lot of first ladies and ministers and evangelists and all this stuff that's part of this mess, all right? That's part of this Greek letter organizations to get prompts and uh, certain prompts for their church. All right, uh, to get certain prompts in life, they become part of these Greek letter organizations. And Esau know these things because they have been trained to uh, to think a certain way. When you're trained to think a certain way, Esau don't have to worry about them going against their system because they know that they went through their college system in a HBCU to be trained to think like them. All right, that's why you have a lot of uh, um, political figures if you, if they black. Nine times out of ten, they've been through this uh, Greek letter organization, all right? It's on their resume, all right? All right? A lot of entertainers, they become higher entertainers, a lot um, a higher paid entertainers. They become spokesmen for black people. Why? Because they have been through this system of belief, all right? And it's a Greek letter organization, the Greek belief. So the scripture says you can't be unequally yoked with these people. Come on. And what communion have light with darkness? All right, you walking in the light now. You're keeping the commandments. You should have no communion with the darkness. All right, come on. And what concord have Christ with Balaam? All right, so what does Christ have to do with the devil? Christ ain't walking with the devil. Baal means the devil. Come on. Or what part have he that believeth with an infidel? All right, come on. And what agreement have the temple of God with idols? All right, with what? With idols. With idols. When you become into this truth, you become uh, the temple of God. And what agreement do you have with idols? All right, those gods that they're serving that they're not telling you, when you're crossing over and burning the sands, guess what? You are crossing over to serve other gods, and you do it out of ignorance. All right? And it's mostly Christians. All right? It's mostly Christians, black Christians, that are in these fraternities and sororities. But when you come into this truth, you got to denounce one. <laughs> Either you're going to denounce God or you're going to denounce the idol. All right? The idol. The idol gods. They are dumb. They can't see. They can't smell. You, you serve them out of ignorance and don't even know it. Come on. For ye are the temple of the living God. Y'all got to understand something. When you come into this truth that you become the temple of who? The living God. Of the living God. All right? Not no idol called Atlas. Not no idol called Minerva. Not no idol called Horus. Not no idol called uh, Beset. Not no idol called um, um, Anibus. All right? It's no, hey, those are idols. You got to ask yourself if you don't know fraternities or I'm lying. Why do they, you know, they hold their hands, uh, these certain different type of hand signs, all right? Why does the cute, well, well, if you're a cute dog, why do you stick your hand to the side and lick out your tongue, imitating a dog, all right? Why would you do that? Because you're portraying that you're half human and half dog. What dog? <laughs> you got to ask yourself that and go look it up, and you will find that those are idols that you were worshiping. Come on. As God have said. I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God. All right, so God is going to be your God now, all right? He's not going to be the God of an, in an idol, all right? Come on. And they shall be my people. Uh-huh, and we're going to be your, you, if, if you come into this truth, you are understanding that you're what? We are God's chosen people. Come on. Wherefore, come out from among them. Say, read that part again. Wherefore, come out from among them. All right, should I denounce my frat or for? My fraternity, I mean my fraternity or sorority, what the, what the Bible say? Wherefore, come out from among the them. The Bible said, wherefore, come out from among these people. Come out from among who? These, these sinners. All right, come on. And be ye separate. And do what? Be ye separate. Be ye separate. All right, come on. Say if the Lord. Come on. And touch not the unclean thing. Don't touch the unclean thing. Talking about the idols. Don't touch the idols of these people. All right. And I will receive you. And God said he will receive you. With that, I hope y'all got something out of that 15 minutes with the captains. With that, we're going to say shalom.
We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.